welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 188. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Hello there. And also joining us is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. How are you guys doing? It's my 24th birthday! Woohoo! Man, how I wish I had some streamers in one of those confetti things to toss around the room. I guess I'll save that for next year. Yay. How, is, how has it been, man? Like, how's your birthday? It was awesome! We had pizza, we had cake, gift cards, games on Steam, I bought myself a new iPhone, and a cup with the signature, The Boss. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, you bought yourself an iPhone? I've, dude! Samsung. <laughs> These iPhones these days. iPhones are so 2005, man. Get with the times. You said you know I... What? I was preparing no, I my just, slapping hand that is like 30 kilometers long or something, so <laughs> I can just go to like 30 kilometers away from you and just slap you in the face for buying an iPhone. Wait, okay. wait, did I say iPhone? Yeah, no. you, you said, said iPhone. iPhone. You said oh, okay. iPhone. Okay, my apologies, my apologies. I meant to say smartphone. Uh, the only Apple product we talk about here is Applejack. Nothing else. <laughs> she's not a product, she's a pony. Anyway, yes. Like, I'm a, no, she's, a, smartphone. she's a product of Hasbro. Oh, wow. She's a Hasbro product. That, okay, if you look at it that way, yes. That is until and, Bill Gates gets a hold of, of her and starts to make the competence to Apple. Jinx it, don't jinx it, don't jinx it! Shut I up. have Apple slash as well. Ha 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 Screw you, Steve Jobs! Oh, he's well, no. Let's not go there. Anyway, so I've been playing with my new smartphone, mm-hmm. and I can't put it down, man. There's so many cool things I can get for it and do. I can take selfies. I can record cat videos. I can picture the food that I'm going to eat and all the weird places I go and tweet and Facebook everywhere. Well, as long as there is a Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, so you basically can I'll... waste your time even more now and be less productive than you already are. <laughs> I don't go out that much. I won't be using my phone all that much. Uh, so my productivity won't drop that hard. <laughs> all right, all right. Don't get started on playing one of those mobile games. Don't get online or you will never get out. Oh, don't mobile get Tumblr. Get out. Mobile yeah. Tumblr is the death of you. Mobile Tumblr. So don't, like, go to don't go to Twitter. <laughs> don't download anything like that. And if there is a program that says we will read your cell phone for free, step away from it <laughs> and don't stop running. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Congratulations, bro. Happy birthday and all that whatnot. Happy awesome. birthday, dude. Ah, oh, yeah. And James, what about you, man? Um, I survived the week. Yay. Anything Go me. No, uh, this week has been weird uh, because I have been working on commissions almost all day. Uh, in, in even though I went out like a couple of days, um, I went to the movies and I went out with my with my mom to do some shopping to keep preparing the merchandise for Brownie Scott. We didn't, I didn't really do anything all that exciting. Uh, definitely not on the level that Raw has been talking about. I haven't done anything important. I haven't done anything interesting. Just stay alive, keep the bills paid off, and keep on drawing. That's actually more than some people can say. You know you become old when you're having a very thrilling conversation about jogger types and how good they're going to do to your digestive system. <laughs> oh, wow. Because I, I had that with my with my mom. We were talking about that. And he was like, hey, do you want to get some yogurts? And I'm like, oh, yeah, wow. that's a good idea, actually. I have been having terrible, terrible health problems lately. Yeah. Some yogurt could do me so good. Wow. Well, at least you have food. That's good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You, I measure the stability of my family by how full my fridge is. Yay. Right now it's full. So we're good. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And as for me, well, um, last Wednesday, I think. Yeah. Last Wednesday, I went to a brony meetup, a small one. And it was about gaming. Like physical real life gaming, like board games and whatnot. And I got to play a cool game called Exploding Kittens. Which is really fun. Really, really fun. I, I guess I have to pimp the place out because they're an awesome place. Um, all aboard community gaming center in, where's the location again? Uh, you, you know what? I try and link the website to here because they're pretty awesome. So yeah, if you have a chance, if you live in the area of, Wherever the link's going to lead you, 
they're pretty cool they're awesome and they have a lot of board games if you want to play the Battlestar Galactica board game they have it so yeah that's that's how my week been but with that let's carry on to the news <laughs> we're going straight to the news because we don't have any guests yeah, this week yeah. it's hard to get guests for this podcast guys just take that into into consideration yeah Think about the caliber of guests we had. We really need to take a break. We raised the, ha- the bar way too high. We're going to wait until the bar b- lowers itself again. Oh, yeah. We, we do have silver every week, so <laughs> that's yeah. good, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, come on. We have a we have a super special awesome guest every week, and you guys don't appreciate it. Come on. What's wrong with you? Ah, is, he, gonna... is he even a guest? <laughs> and besides, I'm here every week as well, and I'm horse famous. I appreciate all the work I do. I am definitely <laughs> joking now. Uh, but anyway, talking about the jokes and the rate, ratings for this show, the rating for the other show we watch. Hey! Uh, so, apparently, if you read on EQD about how, how the ratings are doing, it's going up, it's going down, it's like topsy-turvy, it's not as awesome as before, and... Someone on Twitter asked Big Jim, asking him about his thoughts on the ratings and whatnot. And Big Jim has to say, I don't pay attention to the ratings and I don't know why you guys bother to either. <laughs> that's a smart way, or that's something smart to say. So, James, what do you think about it, man? I think that worrying about the ratings is like worrying about how many notes you get on a post on Tumblr. It's just a number. It doesn't represent the quality of something. Uh, make it TV show, picture, movie, or whatever. Um, when Citizen Kane came, I know Citizen Kane, I know, typical, uh, movie example. But when that movie came out, uh, in the time that it came out, the critics ignored it, and the awards, uh, shunned it, and it was a massive box office flop. Because people didn't care for it. And time put it in its place and it has now become the staple that people follow when it comes to, you know, creating a new movie or coming up with a new, with a, with, with a new way of telling stories. Um, and then you have on the other side of the spectrum, the Transformers movies mm-hmm. that despite being, uh, and besides it's kind of like topical because we're talking about Hasbro properties. So Transformers, uh, despite uh, doing all they do, all, all they, all they do, they, <laughs> they get lots of hate, nobody likes them, and yet they make a bad load of money! And have amazing ratings! So, yeah, guys, ratings don't mean a thing. You shouldn't care about ratings. Well, true that, but if you do think about it, like, Ponies is a show where the dedicated fanbase are already set in their ways and they'll watch it. But if you do remember, like Pixel and the Fantastic Four, they had really terrible ratings. Nobody went to watch those movies. Yeah, so? So, that yeah, also played yeah. a part in... Yeah, you know? well, yeah, well, Alan Sandler is going to make another movie next year. Perhaps he's going to make a, a, several movies in the coming years. And 20th Century Fox is already preparing the sequel to Fantastic Four. So, your point? Yeah, my point is they could have gotten more. I, I don't know. I mean, like, what is the ratings, by the way? Like, what do they even do? They measure the amount of interest that people have on something. And they basically tell the company, hey, should we keep doing more of this or should we not keep doing more of this? I have no idea how they're measured. I guess that the system over there in the U.S. is different than the system that we have over here in Spain. But they usually don't mean a thing. Don't bother with the ratings. The same way that I should say, don't bother with the notes, don't bother with the favorites, don't bother with the reblogs, the retweets, or anything like that. Do they help? Yes. Is it the only thing that matters? No. Let me find the website of an artist that I am not friends with, but a friend of mine is. Let me show you here on the Skype call on a podcast that you guys cannot see, but you may want to link it later, Norman. That guy works for a video game company. His DVNR name is ThackDV. He has beautiful illustrations. He also has late, less page views than I do. This guy is a professional illustrator. He has his degree. He has his job. He gets paid for it. He's a professional. And he gets 
completely under the radar for many people. Ratings are not a sign of anything, definitely not of quality. They don't mean a thing. Don't bother with the ratings. I, for once, well, I have always agreed with Big Jim Miller, but I think I agree with him more now than I have ever before. And these guys, uh, their job is to produce this, this wonderful TV show, and they're putting all their effort into it. They don't want anybody to tell them, oh, the ratings, they're low. Do you think they don't know? I'm pretty sure they do. And because they're grown-ups, they're adults, they don't care. Ratings don't mean a thing. What matters is the next project. That's it. I don't know how to say it or how to emote, but the thing is, when you think about it, like, yeah, higher ratings is awesome. Like, having a thousand notes on a Deviant or um, Tumblr blog is awesome. But I personally got no idea how does it affect the show. Like, yes, big companies like Papa Hasbro looks at it and they're happy with the ratings. But I got no idea how it affects the show. You already bought the contract. The toys are selling off the shelves. So Yeah, well, you know that Hasbro has always made the money out of the toys instead of making the money from the TV show. If they only made the money from the TV show, I can tell you that My Little Pony wouldn't exist nowadays. We had to go through Generation 3 and 3.5 in order to get Generation 4. And the fact that 3 and 3.5 didn't sink the ship... I don't think that the low ratings of Generation 4 are going to sink the ship either. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, there are, there is, this thing goes to the same other, to the many other examples. I mean, all those terrible superhero movies that we had during the 90s didn't, didn't prevent awesome superhero movies from happening nowadays. The terrible ratings of fantasy movies during the 80s didn't prevent Lord of the Rings to be produced. It doesn't matter. Like, it's, uh, Ridley Scott producing three flops in a row didn't stop him from breaking the box office with The Martian. So it doesn't matter. Ratings don't matter. What matters is the next project. Like, you finish this? Yeah, good. Let's move to the next one. Yeah, I guess you're right because, well, it's something that is hard to explain, hard to tell because, hey, it's just a bunch of numbers. What do we know? I'm going to give you an example that is going to hit close to home. The ratings for the NBS show... (laughs) Some episodes of the NBA show, the normal one, they don't get over 100 views. When it comes to the review shows, we get more than that. We get ridiculous amounts of numbers. And when we get a special guest like Michel Krieber or Amy Keating Rogers, we almost scrap the 1000s. And with some, we all, we even get over the 1000s. What would it say about us if we stopped making the show when one of our episodes doesn't even get to 50 views? Would we stop making the show? Do you want to, like, throw in the towel and say, that's it, screw it, I'm done, I'm not going to continue doing this? No, you move to the next show, man. Because we know what we're doing. True that. Now that you explain it that way, ratings doesn't even matter. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't matter a thing. It's just a number. That that's that. It's it's like the likes and the dislikes on a YouTube video. It's like I don't care about the likes and dislikes. I can just can I just watch something funny or something informative? Mm, true that, true that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, like you said, moving on to things that do matter is Josh Haber and Ishiro Dell went on to a show and got interviewed, and an interesting question was posed to them, and that question was who their dream guest star would be for the show or Equestria Girl. And Ishii Rodell responded with Christopher Watkins for Starshot the Bearded. And Josh dropped this interesting quote, which is, it kind of already happened, and that's all I'm allowed to say. So, yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> Both statements have nothing... Have nothing to do with each other, so I don't think that, yeah. I mean, uh, Josh, he's the writer for the show, so I'm guessing he already, I, I don't know, probably what Lauren did with Discord, says like, oh, this character's gonna be like Q from Star Trek The Next Generation. You know what, can we get him? Oh! <laughs> so, probably, it, it could be that way, so I've got no idea, who could he invite? Who did he like? Uh, I do know that he used to work with uh, Mel Gibson before. Did he? Yeah. In what? Uh, PA, personal assistant. Oh my god. Poor guy. Um, <laughs> nah, he was awesome back then. I don't know. So, could it be? <laughs> I wouldn't want to have Mel Gibson in my, in my show for ponies. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey. 
But is she Rodell? Like Christopher Oke for Star Soul the Beard? I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> well, they're both old and gray now. <laughs> uh, true. I always thought that they were going to bring in, um, uh, what is the name of the doctor from Star Trek, the next generation? What was his name? Doctor, oh, that's Sp- Spock? No, no. No, no, no. Robert Picardo? Was it Robert Picardo? Picard, you mean the captain, Picard? Um, no, 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 not Picard. No, no, no. I'm not talking about. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. But I can't remember yeah, the guy's not... name either. <laughs> Sorry. Man. Oh my God, I, it's going to bother me now. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Uh, well, Ro, who would you like to see in the show? Well, Christopher Walken is one of my favorite actors. I would also love to see Morgan Freeman or Jim Carrey. <laughs> Jim Carrey would be awesome, man. Like having Jim Carrey on the show. Wow, that'd be awesome. Jim Carrey, Morgan Freeman, or, um, I, I lost my thought, I lost my thought. But yeah, those are two of my favorite actors I would love to see voice one of the newest characters. And James, what about you, man? You still looking up Wait. for those Star Trek characters? <laughs> yes, can you please say the question again? Who would you like to see in the show, like guest actor and stuff? Guest actor? You know, I never make myself any illusions to see a character or uh, an actor or a celebrity in a TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, like, in, I, in any TV show that I watch, because I don't like to hide myself for anything. Like, the when... But all, and this goes all the way back to 2011, when I started watching MLP, when they were joking about, hey, maybe they should get... Uh, <laughs> Maybe they should get Weird Old Jankovic to appear in the show. And I'm like, yeah, that will happen. Four years later, oh my god, it's <laughs> Weird Old Jankovic appearing in the show. This is so cool. Now, that wouldn't have had the same impact if I had been hyping myself for it. And in every season that comes, I would just be like frustrated going, ah, there is no, there is no Weird Old Jankovic in this, in this show. It's worthless. I don't want to keep watching it. Ah, ignore. And I would end up losing interest in watching it. And probably I wouldn't even be talking with you guys right now. So I don't hype myself for any celebrity. And I don't have any illusions to see any celebrity in the show. Uh, because, you know, it's kind of funny mm-hmm. that we say, oh, we want to have so-and-so on this show. Like, we don't have enough amazing voice actors appearing in it already. Mm-hmm. True, true. Like, just just Tara Strong, Ashley Ball, <laughs> Andrea Liefman, and Tabitha St. Germain is enough for me. And, uh, uh, hell... I will get sad the day that they uh, they have to cancel the show. That means I will have to stop listening to Tabitha and her awesome voice acting skills. Yeah, true, true. But, you know, I mean, like, we have our kind of dream people we want to work in. And for me, I, I want, um, who do you want to call this? Frank Walker. Frank Welker. Welker, yeah. Frank Welker. Frank Welker. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Who's Frank Welker again? Well, he, he is the guy who voice acted everything in everything. Yeah, kind of. Um, well yeah. known for Megatron or Galvatron in the Transformers. Oh, right, right, right. But here's right. something. That's a, so that was his name. Mm-hmm. But here's something interesting. Like the new Scooby Doo's out. Like, um, I forgot. Oh my god, don't talk about that one. Just, just no. Just no. no. You mean the family, the guy mm-hmm. Scooby Doo? No. Show? Yeah, yeah. It's not that bad. You're really talking funny. about, yeah. Celeste, no. please, no. I no. don't even, I don't even want to bother. I don't think Scooby Doo was a very good TV yeah. show to begin with. I, I kind of like it. But anyway, I tried to listen, oh sorry, I look who was the voice behind it and it was him. And I googled it and oh my goodness, he is just awesome. I like it. Yeah, right. How many title credits that he has under his name? Like over 1,000? Yeah, he did a lot. He's been in everything. TV shows, movies, video games. You say it, he's made it. You say the movie, he's been in it. Like it's 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 unbelievable. That that goes for the unsung heroes of the voice acting community. They don't show their face, but they are in everywhere. Yeah, like oh, he he has a what you call this a huge range of voices he can carry. Like that's just awesome. You know what? I am going to toot my own horn here right now. I'm pretty sure that there has been appreciation for voice actors. Uh, before mm-hmm. the Brony fandom, but I think that because of the Brony fandom, we put these voice actors in the spotlight. True that. We, we suddenly were, uh, no, I haven't seen anybody before or after talk so much about voice acting before, where it has now become part of a, of, uh, an integral part of my speech. When people talk about voice actors, I'm like, oh yeah, then, and this guy was so and so in this show, and, 
and when these voice actors go to conventions and they go to to pony conventions, they talk about the roles that they have been, and people are gasping like, "Oh my God, you were doing that! Oh my God, you were the voice of uh, Madeline in in the show Madeline." Yeah, yeah, people yeah. go to Andrea Liefman saying that, and and people are like, "Oh God, you were my childhood! I can yeah, I yeah. can't believe it!" So I think that in in part we're kind of responsible for like bringing back the appreciation that we should always have been given to the voice actors. True that. I mean, the voice yeah. actors' appreciation thing has always been there, but it's not highlighted, like, nowadays. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, probably because of certain things, certain pop culture things happen, now they are getting more spotlight. Like, if you look at um, Comic-Con, you see that the voice actor for Steven, they showed who he, how he looks like, and People just go up to him and say stuff, and like they they're now showing their faces behind the voices now, and Cookie Cat, <laughs> and people appreciate them. Another one for me I want is uh, Peter Cullen, <laughs> having him voice Star Soul the weirdest would be awesome. <laughs> it would be so yeah, distracting oh though. <laughs> yeah, but still. Yeah. Oh wow! Just it will be so distracting. He'll be halfway through a monologue about uh, about magic, and he'll be like, "Autobots transform," and everybody will be like, "Cut, cut, Peter, you are doing it again." Cut. This is... Oh no! Okay, okay. You cross the the scripts. You cross the series. You cannot. Wait, that doesn't happen wait. until season eight. Okay, don't 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 do that. Wait, didn't he kind of uh, cross the streams in one ad for the hub? I don't know. I, I think he mentioned that. something about Pinkie that, Pie and whatnot. You see, I, I, I don't watch anything else on American television other no, than no, MLP. No, it's, the, because it's the ad. It's the ad. Like, I don't watch the ads oh. beside, beyond, beyond in, 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 in the hub. I cannot tell. I cannot remember I now. think. Yeah, I think I remember that um, Frank Walker, who voiced Megatron, said something about Pinkie Pie being his favorite. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, I know that sounds. I, I know that sounds. Wave sound waves favorite is vinyl scratch. Oh wow. <laughs> well, some, that picture there, yeah, right, not right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the you know, now that I think about it, if we're talking specifically Star Soul the Bearded, what about Gilbert Godfrey? No, no, don't have what? Gilbert Godfrey because he will ruin it with his. No, no, no. Sp- his voice is not bad. Voice. He's his creepy it, voice, it, I like it, but the problem is, yeah, he's, but he's not, he voices Star's words world. better than he voices anything else. No, hear me out, hear uh-huh. me out. Star's world is old, uh-huh. and what happens when someone gets old? They become crazy, especially in his sphere of work with magic. Uh, I don't. You, have you ever listened to Gilbert Godfrey's hey. Super Amazing Colossal podcast? I did, yeah. and um, from what I've I'm, heard thus far, a crazy senile man like Star's world, the bearded. And Gilbert Godfrey, I think that's a, I think there's some chemistry, some co- cool combination, some vibes going on yeah, here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not saying that it's bad and whatnot, but I I don't see it. Like to me, well, you don't have to see it; you have to hear it. I'm not sure if Hasbro will want to hire someone who boys the Fifty Shades of Grey book, but oh, he did he boys the Paladin. Yeah, he can always Paladin. get. Uh, uh, he did boys the Iago, so that's still good. But still, I, yeah. I don't, I don't get, I I don't hear him as Star the Bearded. To me. It has to be a very low tone voice kind of person. Here's another question: Do we know Stars will the build it, the bearded's personality? No, we don't. Like, is he like no, the, wise the is, and like you know old, like, or is he like over the top crazy, like I just mentioned? No, the thing is, this is just Ishiro Dell saying that he wants um, uh, what you would call this Christopher Walken to voice Stars will if they had a the chance. So yeah. Well, yeah, here's the keyword. He wants, but is he is no, is the question no. that remains. If he can say that, that means no. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, like if he. Can... But if it's gonna be Gilbert Godfrey, <laughs> I'll be over the freaking moon. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh my god, no! Uh, but <laughs> holy Celestia, is this wrong? Oh god, no! <laughs> but oh my Luna, is it magic? <laughs> <laughs> oh you. Uh, but talking about the stars and the moons, uh, they usually help people with how to navigate. And talking about navigates, people use that with Norman, maps. you are just going so far to create segues. I know. It's like, do <laughs> you have a, do you have a, a blackboard where you are connecting all the dots? You're like, you have like an entire wall full of thumbtacks and strings and you're like trying to connect all of them. <laughs> yes. I have to connect the show. I have to put it all together. <laughs> I, I'm also creating a device that allows me to track them and probably contain them. 
Uh, you lost me on that one. <laughs> okay, okay, you old man. What the have you done now? Anyway, remember back in the days, like we talk about the art of Equestria, the book, the art book that's yes. really big and whatnot. And well, it's out. It's out for sale at the recent Comic Con, and I think you can get them on the Amazon. Amazon is a good place if you want to get your books. So yeah, over there you can get the books, and apparently inside the book they're expanded the world map, and this is interesting. They added Ponyville. It has a crystal castle now. And you just have to look for yourself. It shows a lot. This looks like a good idea for a board game. You know, like we play Ticket yeah. to Ride? Oh, God. But this uh, Equestria version. Oh, God. Hasbro, make it happen. <laughs> oh, God. I will toss my money at the screen. When it comes to the map, when it comes to this new map that they just released, to be honest, I really don't see the point. It's kind of like trying to bring sense into a world that doesn't really make sense. Like, to me, it's very funny. From season one, I said that the world was already in kind of disarray. Um, especially when you have a character that can cast a spell that changes personalities of monsters that quickly. Now, I'm looking at you, Twilight Sparkle. So, basically, the appearance of Discord didn't do anything to change the overall tone of the whole thing. And bringing them up into the whole thing is kind of like, okay, uh, People who like maps may get a kick out of this. I used to like maps. I don't like them anymore. Uh, but, I mean, what is the point on, on this other than, hey, we have a map. Now you can place every character in these places well, and all I that. I guess it's just for fun. It's like, just having a map of the world looks awesome. And, well, looks like the people at the show wants to do that too. And if you take a look-see, it's pretty interesting. Like, where everything is and how everything's located. Like you can even see the Equalist Town. It's way up north. Like um Yeah. Starlight Glimmer yeah, And then you can see Philadelphia and the uh, Griffin Stone Kingdom way across the ocean. And hold on a sec, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. Big Macintosh has entire hills in his <laughs> honor. <laughs> There's there it is Macintosh Macintosh Hills. hills. Yeah, right south of Apple of Sweet Appaloosa. Magadosh goes, damn, Mac. <laughs> Appaloosa doesn't have sweet before it, but okay. I don't know what to say. But I was quoting Brayburn. Uh, but still, I think this is kind of interesting because the last time we had a map, it was kind of located, well, around what we knew. And now we have a bit more. We have Griffinstone. They are showing that. And I'm... St- Still wanting to know about the dragon lair. Like, was that from the show? Remember the one that Spike was in where he had to do that stuff? Could be. Could Mm -hmm. be. Or, I don't know. Maybe not. And if you do look, see at the south, you see the pyramid temple that Daring Do went. (laughs) Which makes no sense because in the TV show, don't go in that direction. They go to north, but whatever. (laughs) Maybe they do. Wait, Maybe they, they do? do one uh, the 360 turn. I don't know. <laughs> really? They say they went north. Really? They. I have no idea. But if they go north to go to the Rindu's house, and then the Forbidden Jungle is on the south, that means that Rainbow Dash was following the Rindu for that ma- that amount of time, like halfway through Equestria. It doesn't make sense. It's I a know. TV show for children. What? It doesn't matter. Now, you see, that's why I, I frown upon the idea of having a map. I mean, yeah, it's interesting, it's visually interesting and kind of like, oh, look at that and this, and maybe we can make a D&D campaign out of it. But it doesn't Dude. matter. What? What fun is there making sense? That's, uh, that's why bringing a map is making sense out of things. The first thing that you want in order to spread chaos is to lose your map. <laughs> that's, that's the first way to maybe start. Maybe this part was the one who was working on the map, man. <laughs> And I was just messing with the audience. It's good Uncle Hasbro working true, on the map. True, true. But if you think about it, the temple location is kind of right because it's in the south. Remember, you know, South America, they have all the thing. Yeah, makes sense. Or it could be a different temple. But you know what? Still, you, you still get the awesome book with all the... Uh, what you call this? I'd rather talk about the book than anything else because that's one thing that we haven't had an insight yeah. on until yeah. now. I mean, we all heard about that show, Bible, the design document that Lauren Faust wrote 
that the guys stopped working on after the the end of season three. We never had an insight on what the characters were going to look or how they were how how they went from their initial design to their final design. Mm. That's something that is very fascinating. That's something that really, uh, at least to me, grabs my attention a lot. It shows the design process. And the thing that Twilight, her original design looks, she looked more like a, like, like a college student with her, you know, that hat that I don't remember how it's called. And uh, with books and a cape and all that. It's like, that is a really neat design. But too busy, too complicated for TV show. You need to simplify it. I like that. Hmm. It's kind of like seeing the thought process of the artist spread all over the pages. And that's so neat. And the price is so affordable too. It's not even 20 euros. That is so cheap. I bought art books that are way more expensive. Well, then again, they're not pony books. I'm talking about like the art of Bioshock or the art of Rise of the Guardians. And those are pricey, Mm -hmm. right? But this is very affordable. It's already on Amazon at the time that we are are recording this. You should definitely give it a watch. Give it a buy. Purchase it. It's cool. Mm -hmm. It's a good book. Not just for the map, but for everything that it brings. True, 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 true. Because I'm looking at it now and the book itself is, well, it's every fan's or every dedicated fan's um, wish come true to know how they do it and uh, to compare their, what you call this? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, storyboard art with the show. Because I'm looking at a screen here where it shows the, it shows Pinkie Pie doing something and she's just celebrating and the way that it comes from storyboard to life it's really fascinating to look and if you guys seen the deleted scenes in friendship games that is also fascinating and interesting so we get to see some quote unquote deleted scenes probably of how they start off or how they got characters in so an art book is always good because we get access to things that they might have cut out or initial design characters or character designs. Basically, a look behind the curtains. Yes, there's, there's, there's a way to put it. A look behind the curtains. It's the making of. It's the thing that we are never going to get on DVDs. You know what else we're not going to get? A pony theme cafe in downtown. Oh, wow. Only in Japan. Bro, your, your segways suck even more than normal. Hey. Oh, oh, come on. Hey, this is good. <laughs> really? This is good. No, it wasn't. You c- Bro, <laughs> you could do what? <laughs> Moving on swiftly, because I have no idea for a comeback. <laughs> anyway, Japan opens a pony themed cafe somewhere in Tokyo. True that. True that. Mm-hmm. For a limited time, it's gonna be like open for a month or so. It's gonna be like closing down on the first twenty first of November. Mm-hmm. But during that time, it's a cafe filled with all of the generations of MLP from the first to the latest. With, you know, men- theme menus, and I can see there's a picture of a person. I'm not sure if this is a statue or actually a person in a Twilight outfit, but that's some pretty nice craftsmanship there, yeah. yeah. Very simply, yet very neat. And the food. I just hope it's not horse meat. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, uh... I hope it is. If they are not selling horse meat and unicorn meat, uh, they are doing something wrong. Hey, that's not right. But still, it looks pretty interesting. Like anyone, if you're from Japan listening to this, go ahead, give it a shot and let us know on the show. Take, like email us or take pictures, yeah. bring them to us. We want to know, like. The, yes, pictures that did not happen. <laughs> yeah, the, the, sh- the pictures from EQD seems interesting, but I want to know more. Like, how is it? Like, how's the food and all that, whatnot? Because I see it's a mixture of the older generation and the new generation. So that's cool. And I see you can have, like, a plushy companion sitting next to you in case you're alone. <laughs> they do do that. I know they do do that in Japan, but I'm not 100%... Yeah, I read an article that in Japan that some cafes offer, like, these plush dolls to sit, like, next to you. To, can like, I remove bring, the awkwardness. Hmm? Can I bring my my Spitfire Dakimakura? Uh, I think you can. I mean, it's can Japan I bring my, and no one judges. <laughs> can I bring my Spitfire Daki? Probably. Good. I, it was Japan. Daki. I don't have a Spitfire Daki. I want to have a Spitfire Daki. Maybe you can get one in Japan. But anyway, this looks interesting, and I hope we get some viewers or our listeners to post something about it or link us on the Twitters, because I want to know. Like, this this is fun. I, I want to know. Like, it's only been, what, a month? So, yeah. If anybody's in Japan, go ahead. Make us jelly. Jerks. 
And with that, that's the news. Wow, that's a aggressive nice match. Yes. Yes, and by jelly, he actually means Jelton, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Because we here are starving artists. Uh, true that. You say you're a starving artist. I'm actually very well fed. Oh, you. Well, you got popcorn, I don't. Yeah. So yeah. I am a starving artist. No. Give money to Ross so he can buy popcorn. Mm-hmm. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow@gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. Tweetybot will tweet about stuff. I don't know yet. If you tweet to her about the restaurant in Japan, she'll probably reblog and tweet you back. And it's from... In Japanese. Uh, no, I do not. She does not promise that. Well, we got her from Japan. No! We got her. Express delivered. <laughs> at least last model. Oh, you. Anyway, you can contact me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy now is food. I've posted a lot of pictures of food. Really nice. And James, what about you, man? Uh, they know who I am. They know what I am. Next to the next one. All right, bro. What about you? Same, same, man. I've already, t- I've been tossing links for like almost every episode. How many episodes have been here on? Almost a year. I lost count. You can find the links to my Twitters, my DAs in the show notes below. Okay, okay. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on FunnyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person. I'm Relicious Rhymes with Delicious. And we'll catch you guys next week. Anyway, we'll take us out. And we'll see you again in the next podcast. Bye-bye. Bye.